Hello. This is a new chapter, chapter 12 on solids. First, of course, we'll have to learn to identify various solids, and then we'll learn about computing their volumes and surface areas. So, the simplest solids really to compute areas and surface areas pardon me, surface areas and volumes, are the polyhedra. Hope I spelled all right. Polyhedra is a three-dimensional figure made up of polygons. We know what a polygon is now. If you stick enough polygons together, you'll end up with something like this, which is called a rectangular prism. You're probably very familiar with uh, triangular prisms, those things you can hold up and they separate out the light. Well, anything with uh, two parallel polygonal faces, that's a prism. So, you could call this a prism, but it's a rectangular prism. This, this is a, I'm going to say it's a square pyramid. I'm not sure if this base here is square or not. We can definitely call it a pyramid anyway. And of course over here we have a cylinder. I expect you're familiar with those too. However, this, these two are polygons. This is not a polygon. Pardon me. <laughs> these two are polyhedra. This is not a polyhedra because, as you can see, the faces are not polygons. We got a circle here and a circle down here, and then it just wraps around. I'm not. Frankly, if you were to take this part and unwrap it, you would end up with a rectangle. But this thing, due to its curvature and the way it's wrapped around these two circles, by itself could definitely not be called a rectangle. I don't know if I mentioned it before, these dotted lines, these are hidden lines. This is a common way to do it in uh, mechanical drawing or drafting. The lines which you couldn't see, which form the edges. Usually are drawn in as dotted lines. So these dotted lines are behind the faces. If you were staring at this thing, you couldn't actually see this. This is just drawn in. Same thing here. If you're looking at a cylinder, all you would see is the solid part that I drew in here. The dotted part, those are hidden lines behind. Same for all of these. And I just use the word edge. That's some more vocabulary we need to learn. If it's made up of polygons, it's a polyhedron. But what do you call these things? These lines here that we used to call the sides of a rectangle. These are now the edges. So that's right there. That's an edge. The face, well, that's the polygon itself. In other words, this part here, this whole thing. All of this here, this face, <laughs> this face is called a face. That's real intelligent English, isn't it? This polygon, which forms what some people might call a side. This is kind of like a rectangular box, isn't it? This is called a face. This is a face right here also. This is a face. And then there are also three faces which we can't see, and they're formed by these hidden lines. we got a face over here, a face in the back, and another face. These are all rectangular faces, although these might actually be squares. We don't know for sure. Over here, this triangle, that's a face. This is a face. This hidden square here, it's a face. And these two triangles that you can't see, they're in the back. They're both faces. So that's the edge and the face. We have one more thing to identify, 
and it's going to have a name you're already familiar with. The vertex. And this is a vertex. In the polygons, we would call these vertices, wouldn't we? Take this rectangle right here, forming this front face. This is a vertex. Well, same thing with the three dimensional figures. These points out here where all the lines come together and form angles still called a vertex. So we've just got two new words to learn. The edge, which is what we used to call the side of the polygon, and the face, which is what we used to just call a polygon. So the polygon is the face, the side is the edge, and the vertex is still the vertex. Well, with these two polyhedra here, we got this, oops, these are both polyhedra. This is the pyramid, and here we have a rectangular polyhedra. It's called a prism. Or if we do it a little bit differently, you would probably call it a box. Well, <laughs> kind of work out the same. But there is regular polygons, like squares and equilateral triangles. There are also regular polyhedra. For instance, here's one regular polyhedra. don't know if I drew it very well. All the edges are congruent. It's called a cube. We make it with a square. We put a square. Every every face of this polyhedra is the same square. That's a one of our regular polyhedra. For polygons, we had an infinite number of regular polygons. You can create as many regular polygons as you can have sides, and there's no limit to the number of sides that you can have. With polyhedra, the situation is quite a bit different. There are only five regular polyhedra. Yep, you can search the universe for the rest of your life. You're only ever going to find five of them. One's a cube. That's this one here. The other one is a different kind of pyramid. The one where the base is the same equilateral triangles as all of these. But in that case, it's made up of four equilateral triangles. See, for the pyramid, we have a square base. And I think we have four triangles all together here. All coming together here at the top. They're slanted in. They come together right here. Well, there's a tetrahedron, which has the triangular base and then three other triangles because. After all, a triangle ha only has three sides, so you can only put three triangles up here on top. You would have four equilateral triangles. That's also a regular polyhedron. There's another one with eight sides. Let's see if I can find uh, one of those and show it to you. There's one with 12 sides and one with 20. There's only one made up of squares. Three of them are made up of triangles. That's the tetrahedron, the octahedron, this one with eight sides, and the icosahedron. That's the one with, I said sides again. Don't let me get by with that. They're faces. Tetrahedron has four faces. The octahedron has eight faces. The icosahedron has 20 faces. The tetrahedron octahedron and icosahedron are all made up of equilateral triangles. But one of them is different. That's the dodecahedron. That's made up of pentagons. This is a dodecahedron. Actually, it's a regular dodecahedron. I should put that in front. Regular dodecahedron. 
every face is a pentagon and it's a regular pentagon and if you think about it that would have to be true because all these other pentagons have to fit together if they weren't regular how would they all fit together in other words this side has to be the same as this side and this side has to be the same as this side otherwise these things aren't going to fit together and form a three-dimensional object and it's made up of 12 faces deca that's 10 dodeca and do is 2 so you'd think this would be 20 wouldn't you 2 times 10 but it's just 10 plus 2 so a dodecahedron is 12 sides gee whiz 12 faces not sides faces hopefully I'll if I ever say side and don't correct myself, send me a nasty letter. Tell me I'm a dope. They're faces. These are 12 faces. Here's roughly what an octahedron looks like. There's two more triangles in the back here and two more triangles back here. And this is a regular octahedron. It's made up of eight triangles. Each face is a triangle. And this right here, this is an ICO. Sahedron. It has 20 faces and this is a regular icosahedron. You can make a polygon with 20 faces that isn't regular. But if you want to make a regular polyhedron, hope I didn't just say polygon, you can make an icosahedron with 20 faces that isn't regular. You could do that the regular icosahedron, which is probably the most important icosahedron, and looks a lot like those geodesic domes that you see. Domes all made out of triangles. Yeah, kind of looks like that. Well, it has 20 faces, and this is the biggest regular polyhedron. So the regular polyhedrons... So... Here are all the regular polyhedra. And by the way, it's weird, but the ON is singular, and when you change the ON to an A, that makes it plural. For instance, up here where I wrote polyhedra, that's just a general classification. That means plural. You can call this a polyhedron. But in general, these three-dimensional figures made up of polygonal faces those are polyhedra. So we've got the 20 faces, that's the biggest one. We've got the 12 faces, that's the dodecahedra. That's another type of regular polyhedra. This is 8. That's from the octa. You probably figured that one out right off. The cube, pardon me, that's 8 faces. Pardon me, 6. You can t cubes are easy. <laughs> kind of, all the way around is four, and then you get the two on each end. So there's six, and the tetrahedron, kind of figure from the name, four. So we get four, six, eight, twelve, and twenty. And as I say, you can search the whole galaxy. You'll never find more than five regular polyhedra. Well, let's get back to the parts of a polyhedron. The edge, the face, and the vertex. Well, naturally, there's a theorem that relates all these together. We have something relating edges, faces, and vertices. Face in this theorem is F, edge, 
that's the capital E, and vertex, that's V. The number of faces plus the number of vertices is equal to the number of edges plus 2. It's, uh, it's called Euler's Theorem. This guy might have been the busiest mathematician in history. Seriously, if you, if you Google his name or look it up in a math encyclopedia, you won't believe how many equations, theorems, formulas have his name attached to it. It's crazy. He was involved in all kinds of mathematics. It's this little, this is probably the simplest thing he ever did. In fact, geometry is overall kind of simple compared to most of the things he did. He was involved in really high level analysis and differential equations. His mathematical abilities went across all the branches of mathematics. Most mathematicians specialize in one or the other. Euler did it all. One of the more simple things he came up with was this one. Faces plus the vertices is equal to the edges plus 2. Remember this is a face, this is a vertex right here, and this, these lines here they're called edges. That's where the faces meet. That's an edge. Where three or more faces meet, that's a vertex. And of course the face, well that's a face. So we'll be using this when we uh, work problems. Which I think we're going to do in just a second here. Well, let's see what went wrong here. What's a prism? Well, remember, a prism has two parallel faces which are congruent polygons. We already saw a rectangular prism earlier. Well, we said at a prism, at a pardon me, a rectangle on it at the end, it kind of looked like a long box with a with uh, congruent rectangles at each end. Well, this has a congruent triangle at each end. They're parallel, so this is a triangular prism. That's all. The fact that there's a rectangle down here, that's irrelevant. Prisms are defined according to the two parallel polygons which cause it to fit the description or definition of a prism. This is a prism because it has two congruent polygons which are parallel. And those two congruent polygons, in this case, are triangles, not rectangles. Well, on this one here, we have a square pyramid. That means that the base is a square, and then we have four triangles, which are connected to this base and tilted inward. The question is, if we were to cut this parallel to the base, what would we end up with? Well, I think we should just go ahead and draw in the lines here and see what it looks like. And it seems to me that what we're going to end up with, what is this right here? That's all they want to know. This two-dimensional thing you would get if you just cut right through it parallel to the base. And it certainly looks like a square to me. Definitely not a triangle. And trapezoid and kite really seem unlikely, especially when we got a square down here. So, square is uh, the right answer. A lot of this section is, and some of the others, will be very visual, which you might enjoy this. The, uh, the number of theorems and huge complicated equations should be a little less. A lot of this depends on just visualizing what the heck's going on. For instance, being able to see that if you were to slice through this parallel to the base and then look at it from the top, what you would see is a square. Now they'd like to know what's wrong with saying that 
a tetrahedron has four faces, four edges, and six vertices. Well, we could look at a tetrahedron, or we could use Euler's theorem and see whether this is right or not. And see here, we've got four, according to this, six vertices, four edges, and then we had two. So this is ten, and this is six. Uh, it's definitely not equal. If it doesn't satisfy Euler's theorem, it can't happen. So what part did he get wrong? Well, we definitely have four faces. That's why it's called a tetrahedron. We got a triangle here, a triangle here, a triangle in the back that we can't really see, and then a base here. So four faces makes sense. What about the edges? Well, we got one here, two, three, four, five, six. So, okay, this, maybe we can rewrite this over here, 4 plus something equals 6 edges plus 2. Well, we must have 4 vertices, I guess, huh? Because this adds up to 8 if we counted the edges right, and let's see about that. We got one up here at the top, and then we got another one at the base, a third one, and a fourth one at the base. So, number of vertices is four, not six. Number of faces is still four, and the number of edges is six. So it looks like when he counted up, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, when he counted up, he just swapped these two. Maybe he counted them right and got confused which was which. Who knows? But the correct count is four, four vertices, six edges, and four faces. And that fits Euler's theorem. So for this one you really just needed to know Euler's theorem. And assuming you could count, it would be pretty easy. Here they'd like to know which two solids have the same number of faces. Triangular prism and a rectangular prism. Well, the prism automatically has two parallel congruent faces. So there's two, but they have to be connected. For instance, we have a triangle here, and then it's another triangle here. No, that's not very good, is it? I guess they should be connected this way and this way. Well, to connect the sides of these polygons, this side to this side, this bottom side to this side, and this side to this side, will require three more rectangles. So we got two, and then three is five. If we had a rectangular prism, we'd still have the two faces here, but we would need four rectangles to connect them, wouldn't we? We'd have this here, and then oops few as I draw so badly and then here we have a very badly drawn prism where we've got two faces but now we need four faces all the way around and that's six not five so we can forget this one so we can scratch A that won't work. What about a triangular pyramid and a rectangular prism? Well, we already figured out the rectangular prism had six faces, didn't we? A triangular pyramid, well, that's just a tetrahedron, and that only has four faces. Remember, you uh, define a pyramid by its base. A square pyramid has a square for a base and then four triangles that come together up on top. A triangular pyramid has a triangle for a base 
and of course you can only fit three triangles up at the top. That's four triangles together, that's a tetrahedron. So that won't work. Triangular prism, well we did that earlier. That had five, right? The two parallel faces, and then the three more it took to connect the sides of each face. A square pyramid, well that has the base plus the four sides, which are all pyramids, and that's five. Well, I think we have a winner here. Let's double check this one. A triangular pyramid, we already figured out that had four. And a square pyramid, which we figured out had five. So, it's got to be C. That works. These two would have the same number of faces. Well, this one kind of help if we remember the definition on it. Octagonal prism. Well, remember a prism has two parallel faces made up of congruent polygons. In this case, two octagons. Well, the number of extra sides we need to connect up those octagons, or whatever the two A prism always has these two parallel faces, and then as many polygons as required to connect up the sides. If there are three sides, we'd need three polygons. If there were four sides, we'd need four polygons. So what we need here, the number of faces, is going to be 2 plus 8, because the octagon has eight sides, so we need to connect. So, faces, that would be eight plus two. The eight that go all the way around, if this were an octagon, plus the two on each side. And that, of course, is ten. Ten faces. How many edges? Which would be, would be easier to figure out? The vertices or the edges? Because we can use Euler's formula to figure out which is right after that. Or we can, in the case of multiple choice, we could just pick whichever one has that in it because we already know it's one of these two. So we have to have ten faces. Vertices are probably the easiest to count up because this for an octagon here. We go all the way around and have eight vertices here, and eight vertices around here, and that's it. No other vertices. So I, I would say 16. So we have to have that 10 plus 16 equals something plus 2. Well, 10 and 16 is 26. So this number here must be 24. Oh. And that works too. So D would have to be the right answer here. And as long as you can remember the difference between a face, a vertex, and an edge, and how prisms are constructed, this problem actually drops out pretty easy. And here they ask you to name a polyhedron that has four vertices. But we just figured out in the previous problem. A polyhedron with four vertices would be a tetrahedron, or at least a tetrahedron has four vertices. And I think we computed that it had six edges also. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, six edges. So here we have the tetrahedron, which has four vertices and six edges. Now this definitely has four faces. So we get F plus V equals E plus 2, remember Euler's theorem. Now vertices is 4, the edges is 6. That means the number of faces has to be 4.
can you construct a polyhedron with a different number of faces? Well, Euler's theorem says no. If you've got four vertices and six edges, four and six right here, this number is set. In other words, we've got three parameters here. And once you've chosen two of them, the third one you've already determined. Because that would be this single unknown here. And once you've laid all this out, you have no more choices for whichever one is left over. In this case, it's the number of faces. Four is what satisfies the equation, and in fact, four is the only option. That's because of Euler's theorem. If they use any other number, it wouldn't satisfy Euler's theorem, and therefore would not be a polyhedron. Well, this one's not... Uh, it's pretty easy, based on what we already know. The hard part is visualizing this cross-section. It is a rectangle. I guess you can see that it's a rectangle. It goes through these two vertices and these two vertices, so it kind of cuts the cube diagonally. That's the uh, interesting thing about this section. Geometry is mostly about proofs, really. Although I don't do a lot of them in this class because there aren't going to be that many on the state standardized exam. Which makes you wonder how much the state standardized exam really has to do with old time geometry. That, that's their problem. Your problem is to pass the state exam. So all you need to do is learn how to visualize stuff like this. There's no theorem that'll tell you you're right. There's no equation that'll tell you you're right. Just take a look at it and see if you can visualize what this would be. And what it is is a rectangle here. The cross section is a rectangle. And it's since this is a cube, every edge is congruent. All the edges have the same length. So this cross-section would not be a square. That's because here's one side of that cross-section, but the other side would be a diagonal of the square. And of course the side and the diagonal of a square are definitely not the same. So this is a rectangle. What is the perimeter? Well, it's really just the diagonal of the square for this side and this side. This is a square. That means these are both the same length. Remember our theorem about isosceles right triangle? The hypotenuse is just the square root of 2 times the length of the side. And they both have the side length. That the <laughs> they both have the same length. That's why it's called an isosceles right triangle. So this would be the square root of 2 times 6. And this would be 6. And there are two of each. So if we multiply this by 2, plus 2 times 6, which is 12, so for a perimeter, you get 2 of these and 2 of these. These are 6, and these are root 2 times 6. So we get 12 times the square root of 2 plus 12, or 12 times root 2 plus 1, however you like to write it. That's this part here, the perimeter. What about the area? Well, that's super easy. As long as you know the length and width of a rectangle, that's root 2 times 6, or say 6 times root 2, times 6. You can get root 2 times 36. And oh, they gave us dimensions. So this is actually inches. And this is square inches. Well, we had one theorem in this section. That was Euler's theorem. Everything else is pretty much visualization and remembering your various polygons and regular polygons. Otherwise, not really a bad section, and this is about it.